Gilderoy Lockhart, Order of Merlin 3rd Class, Honorary Member of the Dark Force Defence League and 5 times winner of Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award, was a half-blood wizard and former student at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and later became a famous wizarding celebrity who authored many books on dark creatures and his encounters with them. This is the life of Gilderoy Lockhart. Gilderoy Lockhart was born on January 26, 1964 to a muggle man and witch and had two elder sisters, both of whom were born squibs. Lockhart's mother loved him more than any other of his siblings and this, combined with the revelation of his wizardry and his acceptance into Hogwarts, caused his vanity to grow rapidly. He and his mother forgot, in their excitement, that Hogwarts was a school for all British and Irish wizards and thus his introduction into the school along with everyone else was, in his eyes, extremely dull. He entered Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry on September 1st, 1975 and was four years below James Potter and his friends. He was sorted into Ravenclaw House but he did however narrowly avoid being sorted into Slytherin, such was his ambition so great. He had hoped to be greeted by whispers and stares, as in his mind he was already a fully fledged genius with extreme magical prowess overlooking the fact that he was merely ordinary at that point and that there was more talented children in his presence. However, the thing that upset him most was that none of the students were particularly impressed by his naturally wavy hair and surprisingly, his vanity set aside, Gilderoy did have tremendous ability and he was cleverer than most of his classmates but he had a bad flaw in that he would not try unless he was the very best meaning that if he saw a student excelling slightly quicker at something than he was, he would therefore not make any further effort. Gilderoy did achieve good marks and his teachers did think that, with hard work, he might be able to make something of himself, even if he fell short of his ambitions that he would freely share with anyone who bothered listening, that he would succeed in creating the Philosopher's Stone before leaving school and that he intended to captain England's Quidditch team to World Cup glory before knuckling down to become Britain's youngest Minister for Magic. His vanity was such that he valued not learning for education but because it granted him attention. Gilderoy craved attention and prizes and begged the headmaster to start a school newspaper purely so he could see his own name in print. When those exploits failed to grant him attention, he took to grander, more dramatic means of garnering attention. Though he had never been popular with the other students, he did manage to achieve small notoriety by carving his signature in 20 foot long letters into the Quidditch pitch which earned him a week's worth of detentions or shooting a hologram of his own face into the sky like the Dark Mark and sending himself 800 valentines causing breakfast to be cancelled due to the number of droppings and feathers in the porridge. At some point in his life he invented a shampoo that guarantees luscious locks of hair one of his few claims that proved to be actually true. However, due to its main ingredient being too dangerous and expensive to procure, it was never produced for mass marketing. Since then, it was Lockhart's dream to market these overly expensive hair care products. After his graduation from Hogwarts in 1982, Lockhart became an accomplished author, travelling to exotic parts of the world and, having mastered memory charms shortly after his graduation, tricked accomplished witches and wizards into revealing their greatest deeds and then erasing their memories. He would then return to Britain with a new book each time, all of them self-promoting and filled with a wealth of invented details. Known victims of his trickery included an Armenian warlock and a witch with a very hairy chin. His books were very popular and he reserved a special quill of peacock feather just for book signings. He also received many awards for his supposedly great deeds and was invited to join the Dark Force Defence League as an honorary member all the while managing to successfully hide his fraudulence. His former teachers, who were unaware of his status as a con artist, began to think that they might have misjudged him due to his supposed bravery and resilience to combat the dark arts. According to Lockhart, he initially believed that the more exposure he got in the press, the better his career would progress. However, by the time he was writing his second bestseller, Gadding with Ghouls, he became overexposed, something that damaged his popularity. 
he then went mysteriously missing for three weeks, after which he leaked himself to the Daily Prophet that he had been captured by trolls in the wilds of Stockton on Tees. The story boosted his popularity once again. Through his experience, he claimed that one must be sparing with one's public appearances at first, as one might become overexposed. Albus Dumbledore, the headmaster during Lockhart's time, happened to have known two of the wizards whose memories Lockhart erased and had a shrewd and accurate idea of what was happening. He correctly believed that dragging Lockhart into a normal school atmosphere would reveal his fraudulence and with a vacancy in the Defence Against the Dark Arts position having opened up in June 92, he tracked down the author and offered Lockhart a job at Hogwarts, something Lockhart had not been too keen to do as he saw how well his career as an author was progressing. However, Dumbledore slyly hinted that Harry Potter was a second year student at the school and being a teacher to the famous Harry would propel Lockhart's fame into the stratosphere. Ego and publicity hunger overruled caution and Lockhart took the job. The other teachers remembered Lockhart as the obnoxious attention seeker back then, regardless of his later achievements and were baffled at Dumbledore for inviting him to teach. Minerva McGonagall in particular asked what possibly could be learned from such a vain, celebrity hungry man, in which the headmaster replied that there was plenty to learn from even a bad teacher, what not to do and how not to be. Lockhart thus became Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher for the 1992-93 school year and several of his books were assigned for the course of that year also, resulting in an unusually expensive book list. His books alone amounted to 35 galleons. In August of 1992, Lockhart went to Flourish and Blots to announce his employment. It was there that he met Harry Potter for the first time. He became quite excited and dragged Harry to the front, taking as many pictures as he could with the famous boy, and then gifting Harry all of a set of books in an attempt to garner some of the boy's affection. The incident in fact embarrassed Harry, who gave his books to Ginny Weasley both because he could afford his own set and also because he did not particularly cherish his interaction with Lockhart. Lockhart's classroom and office at Hogwarts were decorated with pictures and portraits of himself which moved and smiled. There was even one of himself painting another portrait of himself. Before the class started, Fred Weasley joked that the teacher must be a fan of Lockhart and in a way he was correct. He also decorated the office with copies of his own publications. For his first lesson, he gave his second year class what he called a little quiz, which actually had nothing to do with defence against the dark arts, but instead concerned his autobiography, Magical Me, and the parts of his books just referring to him, such as his favourite colour and his ideal birthday present. He simply wanted to see how much of the class had read his books. Despite his claim of little, it ran for three pages with 54 questions and only Hermione Granger got all of them correct. He then proceeded to release a cage full of freshly caught Cornish pixies into the classroom, causing a large amount of pandemonium. Then irresponsibly instructed Harry, Ron and Hermione to clean up after the mess while running back into his office. He was not the least bit popular among his fellow Hogwarts staff members either and constantly gave them unsolicited pieces of advice on their specialties. Harry and his friends also found them quite obnoxious and could not take him seriously as a professor. Even Rubius Hagrid, the gamekeeper, who usually refrained from criticising teachers, showed public disdain for Lockhart. Many male students, such as Ron Weasley, also considered Lockhart to be annoying and incompetent and gave him very little respect outside of his presence. However, Lockhart's charms had attracted many schoolgirls, such as Hermione Granger and Susan Bones. Muggleborn students, who have recently been introduced into the wizarding world, such as Justin Finch Fletchley and Colin Creevely also admired Lockhart due to their lack of experience within the magical community and easily bought into a celebrity status. After the pixie chaos, Lockhart did not bring any more live creatures into class, but instead chose to read from his books and reenacted several portions of his achievements, sometimes dragging Harry to help him with it. The only reason Harry agreed to do so was to get sign permission from Lockhart for a book in the restricted section of the library, which Lockhart signed without even paying attention to what book Harry wanted. His idea of homework included composing a poem of one of his alleged achievements and offered a signed copy of his autobiography as a reward to the best composer. Due to Lockhart's overall poor performances, 
the class did not actually learn anything about true defense and Ron claimed that he only learned not to set pixies loose and would have dropped the course had he been allowed to. Lockhart's once powerful potential had been wasted from years of misuse and neglect, resulting in him being unable to properly teach or even understand what he was attempting to teach, greatly irritating Harry. For the majority of the year, Lockhart kept hounding on Harry, trying to use him to boost his own fame, much to Harry's humiliation and irritation. Lockhart made it look as though Harry was trying to use his fame of defeating Lord Voldemort to make a name for himself in the wizarding world, that flying to Ford Anglia to school was just a publicity stunt, and that he was actually enjoying his companionship with Lockhart. However, the teacher ignored much of Harry's attempted contradictions to these ridiculous hypotheses. Lockhart personally requested Harry to help him answer his fan mails for detention while bombarding the young boy with his advice for fame, and thought Harry would think of this as a treat, much to the contrary. In fact, Harry practically begged Professor McGonagall to be in Ron's detention in assisting Argus Filge in cleaning the trophy room instead. However, the strict transfiguration teacher refused. Harry then suffered several long hours of dull boredom addressing envelopes and when he heard mysterious voices during this detention, Lockhart thought Harry was merely tired. After a Quidditch match between Gryffindor and Slytherin, which seen Harry have his arm broken by a rogue bludger, Lockhart then offered to help repair his arm. Ignoring Harry's refusal, he ended up removing all the bones in the boy's arm. Lockhart founded a short-lived dueling club for students. He made a fool of himself at the very first meeting by firstly being disarmed by Severus Snape, then claiming that he allowed Snape to do so. He also angered a snake conjured by Draco Malfoy by launching it into the air rather than just vanishing it, causing it to aim at Justin Finch Fletchley. Lockhart was also indirectly responsible for bringing out Harry's full-fledged parcel mouth ability, because if he had vanished the snake successfully, there would be no need for Harry to run at the snake and demand it to leave Justin alone. And when Hermione Granger was in the hospital wing for a malfunction dosage of Polyjuice Potion, Lockhart sent her a get well card with an unnecessary long introduction of himself as a signature. Hermione slept with this under her pillow, much to Ron Weasley's disgust. During Valentine's Day, Lockhart wearing lurid pink robes completely redecorated the Great Hall with pink flowers and raining heart shaped confetti as a morale booster to cheer up the mood against the Chamber of Secrets incident, much to the distaste of Ron Weasley and the teachers. Lockhart received at least 46 Valentines one of which was from Hermione Granger, and then made insensitive comments about entrancing enchantments and love potions towards Professor Flitwick and Snape respectively. This made Flitwick bury his face in his hands in embarrassment, and Snape look as though he would force the first person who dared ask him for a love potion to eat poison. He even had dwarfs wear golden wings and carry harps to deliver valentines throughout the school, which they did even if they have to do so forcibly, and much to Harry's embarrassment also when one forced him to listen to one from Ginny Weasley by knocking him down. This event is, ironically, somewhat a repeat of his attempt to earn attention during his youth in Valentine's Day, being equally annoying. When the Chamber of Secrets was opened, Lockhart made false claims about that he knew where the chamber was and what the monster of Slytherin is all along. He even claimed that he knew Rubius Haggard was guilty all along when the Minister for Magic arrested the former, and while the other teachers were serious and tense from all the attacks, Lockhart was the only one who remained relaxed and uncaring about these security measures. In one instance, he walked up to a scene with a cheery personality and stated, Sorry I'm late, what did I miss? On May 29, 1993, when Ginny Weasley was taken into the Chamber of Secrets, the other teachers told Lockhart to go down to the chamber and deal with the monster, in response to his arrogance and many claims that he knew how to solve the problem. Instead of trying to rescue Ginny however, Lockhart attempted to run away from the school, but was caught by Harry Potter and Ron Weasley when they came to his office to give him some information regarding the chamber, and he accidentally revealed his lifestyle of fraudulence. Harry and Ron therefore forced Lockhart to go down to the chamber with them. There. Lockhart seized Ron's broken wand and attempted to perform a memory charm on both boys, planning on taking a piece of basilisk skin back up to the surface and tell everyone that he was too late to save Ginny and that the two boys tragically lost their minds at the sight of her mangled body. The wand however backfired and the charm hit Lockhart instead, causing him to lose all of his memories and become a permanent resident 
at St. Mungo's Hospital for magical maladies and injuries. His departure from the school was met with the joy and celebration of many students and teachers, as he was not universally popular at Hogwarts. On Christmas 1995, Harry, Ron, Hermione and Ginny saw Lockhart at St. Mungo's in the Janice Vicky ward. He had regained his memory to the extent that he could write in cursive and still enjoyed signing autographs. Ron felt somewhat guilty since his malfunctioning wand was responsible for damaging Lockhart's memories, but Harry felt less sympathetic for it was Lockhart's attempt to remove their memories in the first place that resulted in this backfire. Overall, Harry observed Lockhart had not changed much and voiced his opinion, which made Ginny giggle. It is known that Gilderoy never got visitors, suggesting that his family was either deceased or simply did not care for him. However, he still received fan mail, including weekly letters from Gladys Gudgeon, further evidence that the foundation of falsehood on which he had built his career as an author never became common knowledge, though he had no idea why. He also kept his peacock feather quill, though it had become somewhat battered by that time, so that he could at least keep signing autographs. Though he did retain some memories, Gilderoy Lockhart never fully recovered. Fortunately, however, he is known to be happier that way. And that is all for today's video everyone, thank you very much for watching, who would have thought there would have been so much information on Gilderoy Lockhart. Anyway, make sure you are following me on Instagram at InstaDNJ, and you can check out some of my other videos on the left hand side of the screen. If you want to check out my second channel, Game of Throne Lore, my video on the Night King is still available to watch, and there will be more videos coming soon. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.